we are now going to look at the historical structure of the atom up until um, modern day. The concept of the atom has been around for thousands of years, a concept that uh, matter uh, cannot be divided indefinitely. So there had to be a smallest part in matter. So it was um, a little bit more than 200 years ago that uh, the modern discussion of this started back up. Uh, when Dalton proposed that um, elements have smallest particles that he called atoms, uh, tiny, indivisible, indestructible particles, uh, all atoms of one element are identical and they have the same properties. Atoms of different elements will combine to pull, form compounds. Compounds contain atoms in small whole number ratios. If we change that ratio, we form a different compound. And chemical reactions reorganize these atoms that are bonded together. And that we cannot subdivide, create, or destroy atoms. So the idea was that um, atom was a tiny ball. Maybe like a billiard ball. Uh, but um, we know that this is not completely true, uh, but it was a good first step. Um, so we will see the development of how we decide that there are particles inside our atoms, or atoms are not the smallest particle. They are the, the smallest particle of the element, but there are particles inside of them that create them. Uh, and because we have three types of particles inside them, protons, neutrons, and electrons, and we have some ability to rearrange the number of neutrons, all the atoms of one element are not identical. Uh, and we also know that uh, atoms can radioactively decay and turn into another element also. So, but this was the first idea is that there are small balls, uh, unique balls for each element. Um, and it went a while before we started to change that concept. So in the 1870s, uh, Thompson was playing with cathode rays. So um, for a electrical system, we have cathodes and anodes, like our batteries have a cathode and anode. So we found that on one of those, the uh, cathode could easily make a electrical particle. Um, so vacuum tube, we create a, a electrical potential and the cathode can give off a electric particle. So Thompson studied this and showed that uh, these particles behave as negative particles. So you could do this in a um, electric field like this, you can do it in a magnetic field, but in both cases, they behave like they were negative particles. And by watching how much the deflection is, you can tell that the mass is smaller than the mass of our smallest element, hydrogen. So he gave us our first estimate of the mass of the electron. So it's much smaller than our smallest atom. So we have a subatomic particle. So this um, gave up to um, modifying our view of the atom from being just a ball to a ball with something in it, electrons in it. They call it the plum pudding model. And since we don't really know plum pudding nowadays, I've never had plum pudding, I'll call it the chocolate chip model. So the the chip itself is the atom, and then the uh, the chip, the, the cookie itself is the atom, and then the chocolate chips are the electrons. So you can pop an electron off of a chocolate chip cookie. So that was the idea is that we had a ball now with electrons stuck in it, and you can pop those electrons off that atom. And so Thompson gave us the initial estimate of the mass about a thousand times smaller than um, the mass of a hydrogen atom. Uh, Millikan around um, 1909 made a more precise measurement. 
So this is his experimental design. Uh, he made uh, oil droplets. Uh, he sprayed them with um, electrons. And then they would fall through a hole into a uh, capacitor into a, a, between two plates. And by varying these plates, the charges, the drops that have charges, he would make them stand still. By making them stand still, uh, he can estimate the, the charge on that droplet. Uh, and he came off with a pretty good estimate of, um, for the charge, he was measuring charge. Uh, came off with a pretty good estimate of um, 1.59 times 10 to minus 19 coulombs. Coulombs is a unit of charge. Our modern definition is this 1.60 times 10 to minus 19. Uh, both those have much more significant digits on it than I'm giving, but uh, there are no less than a percent uh, difference between the two uh, for you no know, relatively simple experimental design. So we had this idea that it was still a ball, the atom was still a ball, but had electrons in it that could be uh, knocked out. So this was the idea that Rutherford took when he went into measuring, uh, doing a measurement of the uh, atom by bombarding it with uh, radioactive particles called alpha particles. Uh, so we know that there are some elements that will spontaneously decay and throw something out of them, radioactive particles, and they'll turn into a new element. So um, he put a source of that in a lead block so it can only come out as a beam in one direction and it at a very thin piece of gold. Uh, gold you can mill down easily so you can uh, make it very thin. And surround that by a uh, fluorescent screen which would uh, uh, fluoresce whenever it was hit by an alpha particle. And if we had the plum pudding model, so an atom with some electrons, we'd expect a lot of scatter uh, from these alpha particles. So the results was not what he was expecting, that most of the particles went through this gold foil as if there was nothing there. But then some, a small number, were scattered at a variety of high angles, showing that it hit something very dense. So he showed that the atom was not a, a solid object as the idea was, but that the atom did have a small, solid, hard, dense center. So it's small, so we can hit these small, dense centers and scatter at wide angles. But for most of the uh, alpha particles, they're going through the atoms as if there was nothing there. So he came up with a, a new view of the atom that the atom contained a small dense nucleus and a big cloud of electrons. So the electrons are still on the outside, so they're the easiest things to knock off the atom, but it has a, a small dense center with essentially all the matter, all the mass of the atom in that small dense center, then just that light cloud of electrons. So these alpha particles, if they were to hit an electron, they would knock the electron out of the way, but they wouldn't be slowed down or deflected. So he, Rutherford gave us the nuclear atom. Um, he also did propose that there was more mass in this uh, that would be contained by a neutral particle, the neutron. So he gave us that uh, the uh, we're going to have a, a dense mass, and it's going to have um, uh, positive charge because the electrons have negative charge, and we know the atom is neutral. So it has a positive charge, and also has a, a neutral charge in that dense center. The um, relative size of the atoms, the um, diameter is 10 to the minus 8 centimeters, the uh, nucleus is 10 to the minus 13. So we take a difference here. 13 minus 8 is 5. That's five orders of magnitude, or 100,000. So the atom is 100,000 times larger than the nucleus. So the nucleus is ex extremely small in size, and it has a really high density. It's well above anything that we see in the 
physical realm, 10 to the 13 grams per centimeter. We know that water is one gram per cubic centimeter. So this is like a really high density in that center of the nucleus. So this is not the final definition, so we'll cover the particles in a moment, but this is not the final view of our atom. Uh, our current view of the atom is a quantum view. So um, in the early 1900s, uh, we were developing a, a different theory of physics. Um, the Newtonian physics, when we came to this view of a negative electron circling a positive nucleus, Newtonian physics or classical physics could not explain this uh, because classical physics would just say the electrons would do a death spiral down to the nucleus and the atom would collapse down to the nucleus. Uh, so Newtonian physics could not explain why the electron did not do that. Uh, in the early 1900s, they developed quantum mechanics and quantum mechanics gives us the explanation of why the electron does not spiral down into the nucleus and be swallowed by the nucleus. So we'll come back to the quantum mechanical view of this uh, in chapter seven, when we look at the um, structure of the atom, the electronic structure of the atom. The electronic structure of the atom is what determines chemical reactions because these atoms, as they're touching, it's electrons touching an electron. We never get to the nucleus, except when you throw small hard particles at it. Uh, so atoms and chemical reactions and chemical bonding is all electrons with electrons. So we'll come back to the electron structure and we'll need the quantum mechanical description of the atom to explain at that point. So for this chapter though, we're looking to understand the subatomic particles. So we have three subatomic particles, uh, electron, which is negative. So this is a little shorthand notation, E for electron and the superscript negative to show the charge. And this is the bulk of the volume of that uh, atom. And uh, the electron is a spread out object. It's not a little tiny ball, it's a wave. So it occupies that whole area outside the nucleus. Um, each electron does not do the whole area. We'll come back and the quantum mechanical model will give us the shape of these electrons, but they cover most, a large portion of the volume for each electron and all electrons together will cover the, the whole volume of that nucleus. So that has a very low mass. We don't have to memorize the mass number. We're gonna to have to know the relative mass sizes here. And we certainly don't have to memorize the actual mass in terms of grams. So we want to say that the mass of a proton and nucleus are about one and the electron is much smaller. So it's about a, one eighteen hundredth of the mass of nucleus or proton. So protons and neutrons are both in the nucleus. So these contain pretty much all the mass of the atom. Electrons contain very little mass. The proton has a positive charge, plus one. So our relative charges we need to know, our symbols we need to know, our locations we need to know. So the charge of a proton is the same as the electron, but opposite in sign. The neutron is neutral, no charge, and has a slightly higher mass than the proton. So we need to know our relative charges and that the neutron is slightly larger than the proton. And both the proton and the neutron are much, much larger than the mass of an electron. Um, so these numbers over here, we don't have to know. We don't have to know the actual charge of electron. Uh, so charges measured in coulombs, the actual charge for electron would be a negative 1.602 times 10 minus 19 coulombs. Proton would be a positive 1.602 times 10 minus 19 coulombs. But the relative charges, the locations, uh, relative masses, the relative charges, the locations, the symbols, those are the things that we need to know uh, for this chapter.